you brilliant the interwebs, and welcome to the NBA show. I am the man, the myth, the hippogriff, Silver Quill, and I am your guide on this tour of insanity. It's time to get out the tissues and pop some Zycam as we head into a disease-ridden Ponyville. And joining me on, the, on this uh, hunt for biological super weapons and super viruses are the Spanish guy who tries to draw, James Cork. <laughs> Hey, hey guys. He was apparently got just a little bit of a bug himself. Oh dear. <laughs> no, just water went down the wrong hole. <laughs> I don't mean it. And also podcaster and Blaine's Walker Extraordinaire, Norman Sanzo. I know I can't rhyme, so it will be a waste of your time. But please, do chime in with your opinion. It will be a crime if you don't. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> All clap. You're supposed to snap. Ah, and a wild sapphire heart song has appeared. One, I love you for the Pokemon reference. <laughs> and two, <laughs> I just came back from trying to find a cure. I have not found it. Well, we'll keep looking. It's probably, under the, it's probably under the sofa cushions. And What's yes, the name it, of that video game where you can build a, a, a disease? Uh, this Contagion. I think so, Contagion. Should be. Anyway. Silver, what are we going to do now? We're going to talk about the issue, an issue of My Little Pony, Friends Forever. Number 21, to be exact, starring the unlikely duo of Zakura and Spike, written by Ted Anderson with art by Agnes Garboska, and color, color assist by Lauren Perry. I guess that's the new thing, that you're, you're just assisting with the color. Funny thing is the credits don't list a specific colorist. It could be that Agnes Garboska colored the, the comic too, probably. That's what I was thinking. It's like when they don't say uh, the color is by, by someone in particular, maybe the artist himself or herself did the colors. Probably. Hmm. Well, in any no. case, we're, we're about to dive into this, this tale of disease and friendship. First, we begin with initial impressions. So we're going inverted alphabetical order, except we're going to skip me because the host should go last. You, whoever's first shall be last and last shall be first. I don't know. So Sapphire, what were your thoughts on this piece? It was okay. Not really memorable on my part, but it was okay. <laughs> that is all. Wow, that's short. I know, I know. It's the shortest thing ever, but I don't really have an impression towards this comic. <laughs> all right, you then. I mean, I enjoy the interactions, but that's pretty much almost the same for every Friends Forever comic. Unless it's the rarity and the cakes one, then we want to see more of the cakes and less rarity, which is ironic considering Best Pony. <laughs> All righty then. Short, sweet, and to the point. So, Norman Sanzo, what did you think of this piece? When I first heard about the pairing, it was strange to me. Like, having Zakura and Spike team up, that's only work of fan fictions. But having it official, this is going to be interesting. Let's see what they do. And we got 28 days later. Hmm. All right. <laughs> let's see what we get. And James, let's see what we get from your impressions. Oh, wow. Uh, this, uh, this comic caught me off guard. We rarely see a, a, a Spike team up with someone that's not the main six or one of the princesses. So seeing him with Sakura is a breath of fresh air. That and also the whole outbreak, uh, contagion kind of like scenario where you know, those those pseudoscience movies. They're doing it with ponies. And I'm like, yes! Yes! Fun! It, like, the, the, the pseudoscience movies are BS in on its own, so let's have fun with it and see what they do. Turns out that this is closer to Contagion, which is an excellent movie, than it is to Outbreak, which is absolute garbage. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed this comic. I... I don't know what it is. Every time that Ted Anderson is involved, it's either I absolutely love it or, or I absolutely hate it. This falls on the category that I absolutely love. Well, James, it's better than Resident Evil. Oh, what? The, the video games or the movies? The movies. I'd say either, but yeah, it is definitely better. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, what can we say about the Resident Evil? So they just, they just knock them dead every time. <laughs> ah, punching boulders. That's a scene. Punching boulders or... Or just shake the controller to get away. Shake, shake, shake. <laughs> shake, 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 shake your booty. Shake, shake, shake your controller. Yes. Shake shake you can hide head. forever. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let's get serious. Okay. All right. Oh, super, 
super serious now. My my take on this, this was enjoyable. It's a Friends Forever that goes a little different. Because at first, it's Spike and Zakora working together. So they're getting equal screen time working as a team. And that's really nice. I mean, that shows them building a bond through shared work and effort. Until the end, when suddenly it's down to Spike. Now, granted, Sakura has been the uh, the head honcho throughout this. You know, she's taken the lead as the chief medicine expert. But now it's all on Spike. It's like, huh, a Friends Forever where the combo is undone at the end, when it's most critical. That's actually the polar opposite of the cake uh, and rarity issue. I've said before that uh, the middle of the road Friends Forever usually focus on just one character and uh, and then have the team work together at the end. This one's, this one's a little different. It's sort of in its own class, its own category. Off the top of my head, I can't remember one that has uh, another one that's gone this route. Princess Celestia and Spike? No, they seem to work together throughout the whole thing. It was what, what made it one of my favorites. Hmm. Yeah, they were more equal in a in a more equal ground in that one comic. In this one, it, it it is true. It does come down to Spike, like he's the one that ends up saving the day. Which how many times how many times has that happened? Twice. Not 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 that many. I mean, do we count the Power Ponies episode? No, we count the Crystal Empire saving from Sombra, and then the games where he burned that meteor ice thingy. So yeah. I count Power Ponies as he helps save the day, but only because I'm starved for him to actually get some positivity. <laughs> uh, yeah. But anyway, I, I I have something to say about that too, but I'm going to save it for the end. Okay. So, from here on out, folks, we are hip deep into spoiler territory, and you should wear your uh, spoiler contagion suits. Oh, no. <sighs> you never know what a toxic reaction spoilers can cause. <laughs> well, that's, that's what happens when... That's usually what happens when the sun is around. There's always <laughs> oh, no. Reaction. What? No. What? You knew I was going to make Come on. Come He's on. not bad to you. Tumblr, don't get a hold of this. Oh, boy. <laughs> Silver? Oh, goodness. Well, let's start off with Spike doing the 50-yard the dash towards the Kura's house. I have no idea if it's really 50 yards because ponies are not great with distances. Neither am I. But fortunately, Sakura has a brew on hand to calm his nerves because Sakura always has a brew on hand for something. Yeah, that pot right there, it ties up the room. It ties up the room. It really brings the room together, man. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to wonder if she just has a refrigerator of like cure alls there in the back. Like, she's got something for everything. It's like. Like hmm. the Meg from TF2? <laughs> like, has everything for like a heart? Oh, yeah. Or whatnot? <laughs> Sakura's just rummaging through saying. Like, as I look, there's only one thing clear. I forgot to leave room for beer. <laughs> oh. Oh, so a... you drive me a drink. That's right. And why not? Sakura works hard. She deserves a cold one at the end mm -hmm. of the day. <laughs> Alrighty. But uh, apparently every pony in Ponyville has come down with mysterious illness. So sick, they're too tired to get out of bed, except in that image. What do we see? It contradicts everything and... Uh, that frustrates me. Was there a communication like error in the art department versus the script script writing, or was Agnes just doing her own thing? What happened? I've often wondered about if there's a disconnect at times. Uh, my biggest thing was the Crystal M Siege of the Crystal Empire. The League of Not Quite Evil, but not very nice either, was supposed to be afraid of Sombra, but they never looked so. So I thought, well, art, art, and int and writing intent did not coincide. There. Did you, did you wanna go disconnect? Let's talk. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that when we reach the Gilda and writing. Oh, oh, oh that one. There, there is oh. a big disconnect between writing oh. and art. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh that one. This, oh, wow. That comic is going the further. It's going to frustrate me, isn't it? No, not really. Here's the thing. Um. We'll cross that bridge when we reach it, but for now, let's focus on this one. And to me, my headcanon on this one is they probably got sick later on. That's why most of them are on the streets. That or point of healthcare is just awful. <laughs> I guess they uh, wanted to give the impression of 
the town is riddled with riddled, uh, riddled with disease and everyone is ill and sick. You cannot do that when you have every character inside their houses and the town is like empty. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Although... Also, cheese sandwich is is in the, is in the town. Oh really? Yeah. That's he's, the... he's throwing a, a box of tissues to Lyra and Bonbon. Well, not not in this opening piece. I think it's a little later on. Uh, right? Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, where? <laughs> yeah, so it's later on, all right. Oh, so, later, later on. I like the scene where Zakura is gearing up to take care of this. <laughs> uh, she, she puts on a hazard mask, a cloak, uh, she has an herbs on hand, and then she needs to make a tweet. <laughs> uh, uh. Now that I'm on Twitter, I actually made that reference <laughs> when I saw it. <laughs> I did not have Twitter back during, um, the early days of season five. So I didn't really, the tweet joke went over my head, but now that I do have Twitter, yeah, there's no escape. Even <laughs> tweets don't make sense anymore. <laughs> tweets that have never made sense, Fluttershy. You, you, you naive little pony. Oh, but still, it must, it's much fun. Tell that to M.A. Larson and Fall Papers, they know tweets have never made sense. Hashtag, who makes sense anymore? Hashtag, blame Fall Papers. Hashtag, M.A. Larson, thanks. He's gonna listen to this and he's gonna kill me. There is a criticism here of the po- of the Cantalot Disease Corps. <laughs> An entire town is caught with a mysterious illness, and you're not gonna be there for days. Rapid deployment is a th- is a foreign concept to these ponies, <laughs> which is hilarious because most of the time they're accomplishing huge preparation feats in a matter of hours that should take days. I think priority. Why? So yeah, I think a, a script on story convenient. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. Priority is saying we will get ready for a royal wedding faster than we'll cure a town of uh, of a disease. Well, glad glad your priorities are so straight. <laughs> Viva revolution! <laughs> oh, so they off they go into into a two page spread. Where okay, I will say this: the minuet holding up an SOS on top of a rooftop. Making a reference to Hurricane Katrina, mm-hmm. not really, not the best taste. Too soon. I don't think you could ever really make a joke about that and not look crass. Yeah. Can understand. What part about Katrina again? When people were their homes were flooded and they were cut off from the rest of America, basically. Uh-huh. Uh People were standing on rooftops holding up SOS signs, asking for food, supplies, you know, just stuff. To live, they had no fresh water. They had no resources. They couldn't even get down to their food storage. Do you do you think that's a reference to to Hurricane Katrina? I thought it was, uh, when I read it, I thought it was more a a reference to a zombie uh, apocalypse movie kind of thing. Well, it, for, for me, well, it, it it has a very strong Katrina vibe. Yeah, it, it, it does. It, it, like, it is it, it is true. Like people painting on the rooftops and all that. But I because they all the ponies. Already kind of look like zombies. I mean, look at the red spots, the tiny, beady, black eyes. It's like, God, Club Chaser behind that building looks like a straight up zombie pony. I thought it was more of a Dawn of the Dead kind of scenario, more than a, a reference to Hurricane Katrina. James, I have to ask you though. Ask if me. you were in a zombie, zombie, zombie apocalypse, would you be stupid enough to, like, place yourself on a roof where any zombie could see you? Even if the, uh, like, say zombies, zombies could climb, would you actually yeah. do that? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll totally do that because one, zombies are not smart enough to climb or find a way to climb up, especially if I am in a two-store building with like walls around it, like my house. And two, the safest place during a zombie outbreak will probably be the sky. So I, I'd be looking for helicopters or. Like, uh, anyone that can see me and say, hey, help, is like, okay, we're sending someone to help you. Either way, you're still exposing yourself, and what if you fall off the roof <laughs> due to some oh, I, I, upset? <laughs> you know what? These ponies being ponies, they will either fall flat and then recover, or they will fly because wings. No, I, I, I made the connection, sorry. So, okay, right. okay. How about we move on? Well, I'll go to put in my seat. No, no, let's wait to see what Norma has to say about it. Personally, for me, I think this is, well, with Minuet here, it's a matter of person in location. Because to me, I think it's just 
funny the way that Minuet is just up there asking for tissues because, well, they don't have tissues and everyone is unable to send them tissues. The town of Ponyville is kind of stranded. So maybe flyers from Cloudsdale come along. You know, it's one of those scenes where, to me, it's cute and funny. But I think it's a matter of perspective and location because I'm from Malaysia. I don't have this scenario. So to me, this is cute and funny. Like you, Silver, and you, Safi, you're from the States. This hits closer to home. So you have a lot to say. And it, people will have varying views. I mean, some people wanted to make 9-11 jokes not long after the event. They say comedy is tragedy plus time, but I think there's a lot more time involved in some events. But anyway, and getting back on track, Sakura. Not Sakura. Dr. Hooves. That dude is rocking the Matrix. Cheer <laughs> Lee trying to, trying to just, you know, sneeze her way out of this thing. And all of a sudden he's just like, Matrix dog. Wow. <laughs> oh wow! Let's make a reference because the Matrix was popular at one point. It's, the first one still is. And Pip Squeaks apparently got a uh, quite the gale going as he sneezes onto an umbrella. Yeah. None of these ponies believes in covering their mouths. Yeah, no wonder they're having disease. That's problems. the thing. Like I, I've been noticing that. Wow, ponies here when they sneeze, they do cover their mouth or look away. Or well, yeah. Well, wouldn't it be hard on them because they don't have, like, the ability to, like, stretch out their arms right away? Well, they can just well, look down. Have you well, met Pinkie Pie? <laughs> well, I don't even know. All I know is I'm trying to find some way to make sense of this trying but failing. What's well, fun in making sense? There's no making sense of this. This is... It's it's so funny. My Little Pony, sometimes uh, they go with the horse and Adam. They... They're sitting or lying as a horse might. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the ponies are acting very human in their poses. And yes, their hooves do take on poses that shouldn't be physically possible. Not without, like, disconnecting joints. As Pinkie Pie. As Pinkie Pie. Uh, Light oh. up. <laughs> oh, Rainbow Dash crawling on her knees while begging Daring Do. Uh-huh. It's like, okay, there goes Pony Anatomy out the window. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, that's all I'm saying on that. But it, it's just funny, but inconsiderate are the ponies. <laughs> mm -hmm. True that, true that. Inconsiderate. And so, it's up to Zakura and Spike, who are considerate enough to look after their neighbors, but Zakura enjoys a bonus, a kamikaze bird. <laughs> or perhaps, no, kamikaze is an assault. This bird is just a pure defender. I would give my life for you, Zakura. <laughs> <laughs> the, the bird, any time that the pony sneezes, she, the bird goes, Witness me! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'll go through the gates. I'll go to the gates of Bird Hala. <laughs> All shiny and crow. Feather, feather young crow. <laughs> Call me and I will get, guide you to the gates of Bird Hala by some. <laughs> oh, yes. In yes, Northern Zebra. Yes. <laughs> um, later on he fails of committing his task and Sakura is like mediocre <laughs> please stop me I could spend the entire day making Mad Max references ah. you might think that you're some kind of joker but I'd say this scene is mediocre <laughs> <laughs> so Sakura apparently has a, a TARDIS saddlebag <laughs> As she ha uh, carries an entire medical uh, tent, tent in 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 her side bag. That uh, it's, Hermione's, it's Hermione's purse from the Harry Potter movie. Oh yeah, I I just like the box from Discworld, the the, lu the luggage. Oh oh the luggage. Oh, if you want to go old school, Barney's magical bag. Oh, it's amazing. I, how I grew up in that era. It's it's so strange how often that trope is now used in in popular fiction. We all wish we had a small bag that could carry an infinite space. Travel would be so much better. Indeed. Oh yes. But it would be a problem because what if you can put everything inside it and the the volume doesn't change, but the weight is still the same. <laughs> oh god, that would be a killer. So like you can have like you can have like a mass like a black mass kind of a you know. Dark matter kind of like bag that you put it on the floor 
and it makes a hole in the floor, and it like every it it, attra- it it has its own center of gravity. Oh my god, that would be terrible. You could create a black hole with that. Oh dear. Well, yeah. so much for carrying my house in my pocket. <laughs> That would be nice. Although, Zakura might be able to do it, because check out how she's lifting that cauldron of brew. Granted, she's got Spike's help, but he's a little dragon. I don't know if dragons have, like, super strength or anything, but that's hardcore right there. So, we get a full-page montage of them going around, doing their best to care for everyone, which is no small thing. I mean, the and especially a tribute to Zakura, these were ponies who ran at the sight of her. And though, you know, they're getting along better... She's not thinking twice about helping them. That's that's high praise to her character. Uh, although I do notice neither of them is batting an eye that the cake babies aren't sick like their parents. True that. I wonder about this one. So that's like the Maybe first hint. The medical connection. That's got to be like the first hint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, for us readers, but this is kind of a foreshadowing. That we know what's going on because we are we are reading this as uh, as we have already read the story. But the first time that you read it, you're you're like, why aren't the the babies sick? Like, it really doesn't make any sense until you realize, oh, of course, yeah. they they will not be eating the hair. Ah, uh, spoilers. You just spoiled uh, it, man. Oh, I'm the... sorry. It's like we didn't give a warning <laughs> of spoilers before the episode started being reviewed. <laughs> the suspense. Come on. Anyway. Uh, so... What's that? <laughs> so, so, you're getting to the end way too early. <laughs> Ugh. I mean, I know you're supposed to leave some, you know... Spence. There is a text to that picture as a foreshadowing, but... Like, moments, but... Still, mm-hmm. man. Scene by scene. <laughs> you're getting off track. We're going to the end before we're even past the middle. But first we have to go backwards to a last month when Spike caught the sapphire flu, even though he's looking rather purple. Oh, one thing I have to mention, his tongue is not green anymore. Yes, we finally got a, the colorists finally realized. Hey, yeah, that that always looks a little creepy. <laughs> who was the artist who draws Spike with the green tongue and the green mouth? Who was it? And then we just realized how hard it is to be me because Sapphire flew. <laughs> oh no! What you have wings? So you, you fly all the time. Yes. <laughs> Therefore, you you have the Sapphire flu all the time. You you're hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I see what you did there. Oh. That's right. I always go for the puns. Uh. But, okay, Spike acknowledges that he, he views himself as a pony who can't get sick from pony flu or pony illness, which starts to uh, starts to get Zakura thinking, but just in time to care for the apples. Well, just that uh, having taken care of them, Zakura finally opens up that even though she's finally getting along with the ponies, it doesn't change the fact she's the only zebra. Oh, true that. The other one out. And that, that is a question. You, know, you can talk about friendship and harmony, but when you realize you're the only one in the group who has this perspective, are you really okay? I mean, is it really everything really hunky-dory all the time? No, well, never really is. And the Dory of the Hunkatoo? <laughs> Probably. I don't know. <laughs> But in this scene, we do get to see um, Zakura and Spike bond on a common ground where Zakura is the only zebra in town and Spike is the only dragon in town. Even if he is with another dragon, they're totally different from him. Yeah, they're jerks for one thing. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But he's kind of the odd one out. He's been raised by ponies, so he's a different kind of dragon. Although, nice continuity com- like call back to you. Yeah. Mina? What was it? Friends Forever number 14? I think so. It was the one with Luna it and It was the, 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 the Luna and Spike one, yeah. Also drawn out by Agnes Barbowski, so that's also kind of interesting. Garbowska! Mm-hmm. Garbowska! With Garbowska. Spike and Garbowska. Agnes. What the hell? From the what re- I've seen, Agnes does a lot of Spike comics when it comes to the Friends Forever series. Has anyone else noticed she that? Yeah, she did the Princess Celestia and Spike one, the Princess Luna yeah, and Spike I, one. Yeah, I own that comic, actually, surprisingly. I think I think they, they go with her because maybe she is the one that gets Spike to look the best. Or Agnes Karbuska really likes Spike and snap it up before anyone could take it, like how Andy Price and Katie Cook like uh, Rarity or Princess Rarity Luna. Or Apple, or Apple yeah, yeah. yeah, and they go with, yeah. with her. 
whatever the case, at least Fike has somebody cheering for him. You know, Amy Keating Rogers has multiple times voiced her dislike for Spike, but she's not on the show anymore, so. Really? I, I forgot that she dislikes Spike so much. The one time I got to ask a question of the writing staff at Bro- at BabsCon 2014, she made her, her feelings on him very well known. Yeah, I uh, saw that, like, video. Wasn't it with uh, Golden Fox? I don't know about that. I'll... In truth, wait, inspiration this, manifestation. That one. This was at a panel called "It's a Mayor's World." I know, I know. I'm referring to like the video where I heard you talk about this. Oh, oh, well, yes, it was at inspiration manifestation for uh, with Keyframe. Keyframe. Yes. See. Red version of me. <laughs> so, but anyway, we now come to Fluttershy, where Angel is being very protective of her in his own way. I rib on the guy, but when Fluttershy really needs protection, he is there for her in the harshest manner possible. Mm-hmm. And all her animal friends are taking care of her, so that's good. It's good. Meanwhile, yeah. Zakura's bird guard, mm-hmm. he really is being mediocre at this point because he just <laughs> abandons his yes. post for bird seed. Well, can you blame him? That bird seed is played up and advertised very, very well. <laughs> <laughs> If you were in his situation, would you give in to temptation? If I realized the life of another was on the line, I certainly hope not. I well, hope not. Right. And I, it's I, not like she, it's not like he'd be that far away from it, unless that's secretly from perspective, like a very, very, very big can of bird seed. It is a can of bird seed. Look at what it did to like, that bird's belly. <laughs> bird. He's reaching angry bird proportions, <laughs> which, by the way, I will not see that movie. No, no, do I. He's right next to him, then. This is the thing. That bird's not good. That bird ain't getting anywhere for a week unless you roll it. (laughs) Uh. (laughs) They see me rolling. Uh, But we do see that Zakura is very disappointed, hence the mediocre joke. And, well, he failed. Zakura got infected. Oh, no. No, no, she got sneezed on by Fluttershy. Except not. She's not infected. Yeah, she's fine. She's the, she's the opposite of infected. She's uninfected. <clears throat> Can I just mention for a brief moment? I love the I love Sakura's face when she gets sneezed on, and then Spike carries her to the to, back to the tent. And I'm like, oh my god, that's so funny. Yeah. I love that face. It's like, oh my god, what happened? I I do like the timing here. Okay, sneeze, panic, Spike gets a bucket of water. Splash it on I the crush. Yeah, emergency eye wash, bucket of water, carries to the tent, and that confused the Kura face. It's like, huh, nothing is wrong. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> Sorry. I can spend all day looking at But that. the ironic twist is even though she's not infected and immune, that's not exactly the greatest thing in the world because she knows she's oh. not really a pony. Well, that's the thing that they've been discussing um uh, the grace of zebra but she has pony she has equine anatomy and all this uh, and whatnot spike is a dragon so could they be the immune to the whole thing who knows i don't know yeah but uh how to describe this basically spike ro- spike rushes her back to clear her out and they they start science <laughs> There's science yes. in everything. <laughs> Good Spike. news, everybody. We we have found the cure for cancer, but we didn't find the cure for your sickness that you currently have. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Is indeed, and apparently they lost that cure because it's not there. <laughs> it was blown up in Spike's face. Oh no! Ah. Oh, that'd be a better pill. As they're pondering, Sakura suddenly, inexplicably get sick. Mm-hmm. Just like that. And here's where here's that scene I was talking about. All of a sudden, the other half of this duo is out for the rest of the comic. It is all on Spike. As he abandons her, therefore I call him a bit of a entrance to the rump. I, not really, because he, what is he going to do besides, you know, leaving her there on, 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 the, on, on bed? I You're going to do much. Still- no, he's doing something. He's working to fix the problem. Yeah, still, when you look at the thing that Spike did, 
it's the best that he could do because he went to town with Zakura trying to help at least everyone with their problems and still couldn't find anything. Now that Zakura is sick, what can Spike do? Now it's all on his little shoulders before the CDC comes in. Yeah. When yeah, they so feel like it. Oh, yeah. When they feel like it, yeah. They feel like I, think, uh. I just I still try to picture this in the CD in Cantalot. So it's just like, oh, my former student, dear friend, and princess of Equestria is part of a rampant disease. Well, guys, get out there when you have a free will, okay? <laughs> just in, in your own time. What? No, I have to agree with you on this, Silver, because what were they doing? They should be there. I watched last year. But that is they're playing. The they're playing mind <laughs> <laughs> the, the only redeeming quality is for this situation is that it was convenient for the plot, and that shouldn't be redeeming at all. For who, Spike? No, I mean like the, the CDC's. All right. Mm. Yes, the CDC. No, it's not for the sake of, of the CDC. Besides, b- by the way, before we get any further, uh, reference to Ghostbusters right there. Where? I collect spores, mold, and fungus. <laughs> ah. Sure, Ghostbuster think... reference. <laughs> I'm young. Well, don't worry, you'll get, to, you'll get your own Ghostbusters movie. Oh yeah, that one. Long. Oh yeah, it's going to be I great, isn't it know. guys? It's going to be awesome! I want to watch it. <laughs> Well, more I on that. Don't care. <laughs> more on that in a sec. But I personally, I think that CDC stands for completely disappointing curmudgeons. <laughs> oh. Because they're not there, so I can't fault Spike for recognizing the one thing that all the ponies shared in common was that they ate the same food. Mm-hmm. That now that Sakura nibbled on some hay, it turns out it's uh, some sort of mold. Or fungus? Mm-hmm. Yeah, fungus. A, yep, a it's type a fungus. Of fungus. Equestria infectors. Infectori. Infectoria. So it's a that's... type of fungus that can affect many types of grasses if the, and will sicken ponies if eaten. Common symptoms include sneezing, blemishes, delirium, sore throat, yellow tongue, and exhaustion, blah, blah, blah. I can't read the rest. It's been cut off. And I'm the, 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 the scary part is that this is not completely out of the realm of reality. I, I remember in the in the mid nineties, there was this uh, the mad cow disease. It was caused by a fungus. The fungus among us. Yeah, and it it killed a lot of cattle. So yeah. As long as we don't end up in situations where the ponies are the last of us. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, they, t- they turn into they turn into into mushrooms. <laughs> That game is grim. Oh, I, I have it, and I love it. <laughs> that game is grim. Anywho, after an undisclosed amount of time where apparently the Cantalot Disease Course finally decided to put down their teapots <laughs> and get their rears in gear, no, I will never forgive them for this, Spike has basically saved the town by figuring out what went wrong, which means these guys just got schooled by a baby dragon. Oh, snaps. <laughs> That's right. Ponyville baby, oh South Side. <laughs> uh, I have to say that I do love the first panel on this page. The way that they blur the page and make it look like Twilight's waking up is really fun. Twilight, don't go into the light. <laughs> I think we're done? Not quite, because Sakura, surprisingly, after all she did for the town, she's pretty much just beelining it right back to her home. Like, okay, that happened. I guess her satisfaction lies in the fact that everybody sur- survived. True that. I guess so, but I'm surprised that she talks about not feeling like she fits in. Suddenly, she's high tail back. Now, granted, she's been out of it for, I'm assuming, a day or two. Mm-hmm. She probably needs to check on her home. That cauldron probably stopped boiling and the whole room just falls apart. Oh, no. <laughs> the feng shui of that room is going to be messed up. They need to align the chakras. <laughs> but we do get a very charming hug between Sakura and Spike as they acknowledge that while they may not be, they're the only dragon and the only zebra in town, but in a weird way that makes them a friendly pair of the, in their own right. I also kind of like how Zakora is all nonchalant about just going back home as if nothing happened. I mean, maybe it's in her nature that she 
takes care of other people. I mean, she owns a mess and hut. Well, that could be it because, well, she is kind of the witch doctor healer type of person that Lauren Faust envisioned her to be. This is in her nature, maybe. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't really want to be thanked or anything. Or whatnot. Well, that's my perspective on the matter. Well, Especially the whatnot. <laughs> uh, yes. But... But uh, we also learned that Spike, even though he's a violet and green, he's really white on the inside because he can't rhyme for bees. <laughs> uh, come by to the library in oh this place to be. We got books, something, something, and you get to see me. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and Sakura's closing her eyes and whistling have a tune so she can hide her disgust. <laughs> Mediocre. Mediocre. All righty then. Zippity doo da zip. Anywho, that's the end of the comic. Uh, final thoughts are in account. Well, let's see. Once again, inverted alphabetical order. So, Sapphire, you're up. Well, I wish I could see more Zikor in the show, but that's what the comics are for. And I honestly can't... I never thought that Spike would be, like, hanging out with Zikora, but these two side characters who come from different types of heritages and races, coming together in this comic, even though it's for the sake of helping the ponies, like, how do I say it? Like, it's endearing that they would, like, nonchalantly and unhesitantly, while bonding in the sake of, like, they come from two different type of worlds, but they live in a pony society so they can relate with each other i like the comic i like the comedy although there were some miscommunications with the art that sort of bothered me i still enjoyed it and i'll just keep it at that because i don't really have much to say as normal well there you go so norman i enjoy this comic but it's not memorable it has a few good scenes here and there the interaction between Zakura and Spike is good and the way that you described earlier where the way that this comic tempo flows is the main characters or the stars of the comic work together until the very end or near the very end where Zakura gets sick and Spike takes over. We don't see that much nowadays. We had the complaint with um, Spike and Luna where the majority of the comic is just starring Spike while Luna is just in the background. And to see them go back to form like that is really awesome and really, well, welcoming. Yes, Jane, infect the world with your knowledge. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I hope you're ready. Uh, <laughs> um, what to say about this one that we haven't seen already? Uh, it's, uh, I think it's good, but like Norman said, it's pretty forgettable. I actually, before recording, I was having a hard time trying to figure out which comic we were going to record, and I'm like, oh wait, yes, this comic existed. Uh, which is kind of a shame, because the characters came off as very likable, and they, they are working together to solve a common problem, a common problem, and I like that Spike doesn't get shafted to the sidelines and gets turned into a bat monkey, which is usually what they do with the character in, 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 in so many, in so many instances. So I should like this comic more, uh, but I don't know what it is. If, if maybe it's the setting, maybe it's what Sapphire said that the, the miscommunication between the artwork and the and the writing. Uh, that perhaps is the, the 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 setting or a few other nagging issues. But yeah, I'm like, mm, I should like this comic more. But I don't. Know. I cannot put my finger on it. it, it it's Although... weird. I'd say it's middle of the road. It's a great spy comic uh, towards the end, but not the most for not the most memorable one. Although, it would be sort of... When it comes to this comic, it is a good comic. Like, even if you forget about it, if you rediscover it, it's still going to be a pleasant experience. That's what I came off with. It's like, oh, that's... I like this comic. No, I'm not even saying it's bad. I'm just saying that. I can yeah. come back and enjoy it one day. Mm -hmm. Well, we never gotten a bad comic that we said, oh, that sucks. There's a few exceptions to the rules. Yes, there is. But... When we said that it was not memorable, it well, it's not memorable. It's hard for us to remember it. But when we read again, we're pleasantly surprised. And I consider that as a bonus. You want to talk about terrible terrible comics we've gone back to. 
I found myself rereading The Good, The Bad, and The Ponies way too much <laughs> for my own. Okay, anything redeemable? Uh, anything redeemable on the good yeah, and the ponies? Yeah, because you read it's good art. No, work. no, it still it, it still sucks. <laughs> why do you keep reading it? <laughs> because of the same reason why people keep watching train wrecks. It's 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 impossible to get your eyes off of it. <laughs> okay. No matter how you get <laughs> Well, I've I've already uh, sung my praises for this comic. It's a great interaction between Spike and Sakura. It's them working together, solving a problem, showing their best traits. It's just strange. It's unique amongst the Friends Forever in that the second team member drops out of the project and leaves it in the in the claws of of what the main character now. And it's just like, well, technically that would make this mediocre, mediocre. But because it's so unique, it's kind of fascinating, and it is a positive for Spike and Sakura. And I think it earns that ending the way that it ended. I think it earns it. Very true. And But, but, the Vicantrolot Disease Corps should be disbanded and just make, make Sakura the director. I don't think they should be disbanded because if there's a disease that comes out, who will take care of it? I think they could use who's some restructuring. Gonna, who's going to take yes. care of it now? Start from scratch and build it again. Restructuring, that's why I said. Uh, but anyway, uh, Silver, next week, what are we going to tackle? Well, what, what will we tackle indeed? Shall we tackle another Friends Forever? Oh my, that would be good. Mm. Because well, up next is number 22, starring Pinkie Pie, Princess Celestia, and Anatomy that will make your head spin. Oh, I love that. it already. <laughs> uh, uh. Also a lot of bald ponies, which is, I, I'm curious about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my. my. So, then that's the plan. Tune in next week as we watch Pinkie Pie try to bake the perfect cake and just marvel at the at the failed attempts. Uh, Pinkie Pie and cake fail? The heresy. Heresy. Destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, for the MBS show, I have been Silver Queen. And I am Norman Sanzo. And I've been Sapphire Heart Song. And I am a Spanish person. And we're wishing you all good health and sane. Adios. See you later. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye. Uh, okay, seriously, so far? <laughs> <laughs> always. Always, always, always. I think that just gave me something. <laughs> <laughs>